Hello, everyone, and welcome to Servant of Christ Ministries. In today's lesson, we are going to explore the reasoning behind Michelangelo's artistic approach of his sculpture of Moses and answer the question as to why he made him with horns. The famous sculpture by Michelangelo is located in Rome in the Church of St. Peter. If you look closely at the sculpture, you will notice that Michelangelo placed two horns on his version of Moses. Interestingly enough, this was not him taking some abstract artistic liberty. Rather, this decision came directly as a result of the Latin translation of the Bible in which Jerome translated the Hebrew word used in Exodus literally instead of figuratively. Jerome was considered to be an early century church father. He dedicated a good portion of his life to producing an improved Latin translation of the Bible known as the Vulgate. This is considered by some to be a masterpiece of Latin literature. But interestingly enough, he decided to take the Hebrew verb karan, which only appears three times in the Bible, all of which are in the same chapter of Exodus chapter 37 in verse 29, 30, and 35. The verb karan finds its root in the noun keren, which can be simply defined as a ray of light, a projection, or horn. When this term is used to describe an animal, it is always speaking of their literal horns. So for example, when we read Genesis chapter 22 and verse 13, it states, And Abraham lifted up his eyes, and looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in the thicket by his horns. As with most Hebrew or Greek terms, one word can have a multiplicity of meanings. Even in our English vocabulary, if I say the word bat, there is no way to know if I am speaking of a flying mammal or a wooden stick used to play baseball. You would need more context. This is why it is extremely important to make sure that we use context to define word meanings instead of using word meanings to define context let us take a look at a scripture that uses the term keren in relation to a human being to demonstrate this fact. In 1 Samuel chapter 2 and verse 1, Hannah's prayer reads this way, My heart exalts in the Lord. My horn is exalted in the Lord. When Hannah uses the word horn here, she is not speaking of a literal horn bursting through her body, but rather she is trying to convey her strength as shooting forth out from her. Another great example of this word play in scripture describes God as having horns coming out of his hand. In Habakkuk chapter 3 and verse 4, it reads, And his brightness was as the light. He had horns coming out of his hand, and there was the hiding of his power. Based on the definition and context of this verse, which definition do you think fits best? Is it literal horns coming out of his hand? Or is it a projection of power and light bursting forth from a closed fist. Notice that the context of this verse is describing God's brightness as light. Therefore, it would only make sense for the horn in this verse to describe a projection of power or rays of light emanating from his closed hand. Now, let us take a look at the scripture that Michelangelo and Jerome took literally and see if we can use our newfound knowledge to mine the truth from these texts. In Exodus chapter 34, verses 29 and 30, it reads, And it came to pass, when Moses came down from Mount Sinai, with the two tables of testimony in Moses' hand, when he came down from the mount, that Moses wist not that the skin of his face shone while he talked with him. And when Aaron and all the children of Israel saw Moses, behold, the skin of his face shone, and they were afraid to come nigh him. The two words used here for shun are you guessed it, keren. Now, the King James Version that I used rightfully translates the word as shun, but the Latin Vulgate translates it as, and he knew not that his face was horned from the conversation of the Lord. It is this rendering that Michelangelo used as a reference point for his sculpture of Moses, but the context doesn't allow for that. Let us now read Exodus chapter 34 and verse 35 to really drive the point home that it was light that was projecting forth from Moses' face. It states, And the children of Israel saw the face of Moses, that the skin of Moses' face shone, and Moses put the veil upon his face again, until he went in to speak with him. 
Notice that Moses puts a veil on his face to decrease the light that was emanating from his time being in the presence of the Lord. The veil would have acted in the same way that someone uses a light diffuser when trying to soften or decrease the harshness of light in photography or film. This rendition, for all intents and purposes, is a much better translation. So, why did Michelangelo put horns on his rendition of Moses? It was because of a mistranslation of the text. Moses did not have actual horns protruding from his head, but rather, after being in the presence of God, he had rays of light shooting forth from his face. I hope and pray that this lesson was helpful. If you have any questions or topic requests, please feel free to email me at servantofchristministries at gmail.com. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to click that like button as that helps to get this video in front of more people. And please don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell to ensure that you do not miss any future videos. And finally, if you feel led to support this ministry, there are links in the description box where you can help. Until next time, God bless.